Don't save dollars because you're just a sucker if you do that. So save real money, buy gold and silver, and accumulate assets, real assets outside the United States that pay good dividends during an inflationary time period. So you wanna own companies that can immediately pass on their higher costs to their consumers by raising their prices. So you wanna have businesses where you know the customer is gonna pay the higher price. Welcome back rich followers. We hope this video inspires you to get started on your dream. So please watch until the end. And if you are new here, consider subscribing so that you won't miss other educational videos like this. Let's get started. Peter Schiff gives his opinion on the infamous date of August 15, 1971. So on August 15, 1971, that is when Nixon closed the gold window. Of course, when he closed it, he said it was just temporary, but it's been 50 years and it hasn't reopened. But what you spoke about FDR in 1933 is true because that's the year when the government made it illegal for Americans to own monetary gold. So American citizens could not take their Federal Reserve notes back to the Federal Reserve and get real dollars, which were made of gold. All they could do was circulate the Federal Reserve notes. But if you were not American, if you lived outside the United States, you were still able to take your Federal Reserve notes to the Federal Reserve and actually get paid the gold that the notes promised to pay. And so that continued up until 1971. And basically what was happening in the late 1960s, early 1970s, was we started to run very big deficits in the 1960s to pay for the war in Vietnam, to pay to go to the moon, to pay for the war on poverty, and all sorts of government programs. They called it guns and butter, and we had both, yet we didn't pay for either. And so we ran these big deficits, and the Federal Reserve was then monetizing the deficits. Now we call it QE. Uh, they hadn't you know, thought of that word back then, but that's what they were doing. So the Fed was doing QE to monetize all this government spending. We didn't have the gold, and our foreign creditors were suspicious that we didn't have enough gold to meet our obligations. So they started to show up at the gold window with their Federal Reserve notes asking for the gold. Well, we didn't have enough. And so we ended up defaulting on our obligations because really Federal Reserve notes were promises to pay gold and we defaulted on that promise. And so anybody who says the US government has never defaulted on an obligation, that's not true. That was a massive default in 1971. And we've been on this fiat-based monetary system ever since. And I think this system is now on the verge of an implosion. And I think we're gonna see this you know, relatively soon where the dollar now collapses and the world returns to the gold standard just without the dollar. Because when the world was on a dollar standard after Bretton Woods, it was because the dollar was not only backed by gold, but redeemable on demand into gold. And after we defaulted, the dollar lost a lot of value in the 1970s, about two thirds of its value relative to the Deutsche Mark, the yen, the Swiss franc, but it continued to serve as the reserve and it's a reserve currency to this day. I think that status is what's in jeopardy. Peter then discusses why he's so adamant about gold. Well, gold is real money. And my father taught me about gold a long time ago. In fact, before we went off the gold standard, my father was one of the few people who actually testified in front of the Senate Committee on Money and Banking against going off the gold standard. And my father was the only one that said that if we went off the gold standard, the price of gold would go up and that the value of the dollar would go down and that we'd have lots of inflation. All of the other government witnesses, including the then Secretary of the Treasury and the then head of the Federal Reserve, they all said that if we went off the gold standard, the price of gold, which was about $35 an ounce at the time, they said the price of gold would fall. They thought the dollar was supporting gold instead of the other way around. So they were talking about how great the economy was gonna be if we can only remove the shackles of the gold standard and my father was the only one who testified and got it right because he laid out exactly what was gonna happen in the 1970s. And it happened exactly the way he said and it, the exact opposite of what the Secretary of the Treasury and the Federal Reserve said. And you know what? The Secretary of the Treasury and the Federal Reserve head are just as incompetent now, maybe even more so <laughs> than they were back then. They have no idea the damage that they have unleashed from their policies, especially 
the mistakes that they've made since COVID. The Federal Reserve has done everything wrong since COVID. And despite the fact that everybody is praising them for what they did, remember, everybody praised them for all the bailouts and all the stimulus following 2008. And they praised them when they bailed everything out after the dot-com bubble popped. But all those were policy mistakes. What the Federal Reserve should have done following the outbreak of COVID was withdraw money from circulation, allow interest rates to go up. Because the problem with COVID, and I said this at the time, was a supply problem. People were leaving their jobs. Companies were shutting down. People were staying home. They weren't working. They weren't producing goods. They weren't providing services. So we had a lot less stuff to buy. What the Federal Reserve needed to do was reduce the money supply so that money supply went down with good supply. Instead, they did the opposite. They flooded the economy with money. They printed all this money and sent it out to everybody. So what happened? We increased demand while we were decreasing supply. That's why you're seeing this huge increase in consumer prices right now. Peter then explains what a return to the gold standard would look like. It would look pretty bad for America because a return to the gold standard would mean a rejection of the dollar standard. And so if the dollar was no longer desired as the reserve, the value of the dollar on international exchanges would collapse because we have these record trade deficits. I mean, the last trade deficit we had all-time record high, we're running trade deficits of about $1.2 trillion a year. It is enormous. But the only reason we could do this is because the world will take dollars for their stuff. But if they go back to a gold standard, they ain't gonna take dollars for their stuff. We're gonna have to give them gold, which we don't have, or we're gonna have to produce stuff, which we can't because we don't have the factories. We don't have the infrastructure, the labor force, the supply chains. So the dollar is gonna collapse. And what's gonna happen is all of these products that Americans take for granted are on the shelves when they wanna buy something, they're all gonna be gone because we're not gonna be able to afford them. I mean, they're gonna be too expensive for Americans to buy. So the entire American standard of living is gonna collapse. Now, it's not gonna make that big a difference for a lot of the other countries outside the US because they don't issue reserve currencies. So if you're living in New Zealand, for example, the New Zealand dollar isn't a reserve currency. So if you wanna import something, you've gotta export something. And so people in New Zealand have to earn dollars. We don't have to earn dollars, we just print them. Well. Now the people in New Zealand will start earning gold instead of dollars. But the change for America is huge because we used to be able to print dollars. We can't print gold. We have to earn gold just like everybody else. And that's a game changer for Americans. But it's also a game changer for, you know, people who have savings, people who are hoping to retire. If you think you're going to retire on a bunch of dollars, you got another thing coming. It's the dollars that are going to retire, not you. You're going to keep on working unless you take action now to divest yourself of U.S. dollars and dollar denominated assets and buy some real things, you know, foreign stocks, property, gold and silver. You got to get out of paper and into actual things that have real value and that can generate real income. Peter gives his thoughts on whether he thinks a Fed coin would solve the problem. That's just going to make the problem worse. That's just going to make it easier for the Federal Reserve to create inflation. Because in, in, instead of creating paper currency, they just create digital currency. And you have all these lunatics in Washington. They want to use a Fed coin as a way for the Federal Reserve to put money right into the pockets of American citizens. See, they're tired of quantitative easing for Wall Street, where the Federal Reserve prints money so that Wall Street bankers can get rich. They want the Fed to print money so that everybody on Main Street can get rich. But the problem is nobody gets rich by printing money. You're just creating inflation. Peter then discusses what would happen to the baby boomers if there was a stock market crash. What they have to worry about is not just the crash of the stock market, because that could happen. But what's going to be worse is if the stock market doesn't crash, because the only thing that's going to prevent the stock market from crashing is the dollar crashing instead. And that's even worse if you're planning on retiring. So I think the baby boom is probably screwed either way unless they act now and completely change their investment portfolios to be prepared for both a stock market crash or a dollar crash. They have to be prepared for either one, but the dollar crash is actually worse. In the dollar crash, the stock market goes up. 
but it doesn't matter that it went up because it, the value goes down anyway. I mean, go take a look at a chart of the Zimbabwe stock market. That market never crashed. It went straight up. The problem is it didn't go up as much as the Zimbabwe dollar went down. So, you know, you can see the stock market going up, but if everything at the supermarket is going up two or three times as fast, you're not getting richer, right? You're getting poorer, even though you have a higher net worth in dollars. Look, there are lots of billionaires in Zimbabwe. There are trillionaires in Zimbabwe. Who cares? I mean, you're a trillionaire, but you're broke, right? Because the money isn't worth anything. So if you think you're going to retire because you got $5 million, $10 million, you don't know. What if $10 million is what it costs to buy a cup of coffee? You, you can't retire on one coffee cup. If you found value in this video, we would like to give you another video for you to enjoy next. Please like this video and share it with your friends on social media. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new here, so you won't miss another one of our videos. The more you learn, the more you earn.